Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new series where I explore the world of GitOps using Atlantis. On this episode, I will be setting up a local instance of Atlantis to understand how the GitOps process works. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So let's start coding. In a nutshell, GitOps is an automated process that leverages on purely version control or Git tool to deploy infrastructure code. Atlantis is a GitOps tool that allows you to track everything that is happening in your infrastructure code repo. What I will be doing today is attempt to set up Atlantis on my local machine. I have created a new repository for this series, which is what I have open currently on my VS Code session. And on the root of the repository, I will create a new directory called scripts. And I'll create a file inside this new directory called local-setup.sh. This script will contain all the necessary steps to set up all the prerequisites to an Atlantis local setup. The first thing that I need to run inside this script is downloading the Atlantis library. The file that's being downloaded is a compressed file, so I need to add the unzip command to extract the file. On. Before I go any further, let's do refactoring on the fly. So I will define variables called Atlantis version and Atlantis package. I will then pull the appropriate values in my URL and assign that to my new variables. I'm running WSL on Windows, so if you are running a different operating system than mine, you might need to fetch a different package or a different URL. But with this change, in the event that I need to change the version, I can straight away know where to change because this is explicitly provided through the variable. The next step is to set up a proxy to make my local application accessible through the internet. And the tool that I will set up for this is ngrock, which I also need to download as part of this setup script. I need to generate a secret string that I will use for my local Atlantis setup and GitHub configuration, which we will see later on. So that's all the steps that I need to run as part of my setup. Now let me head to my VS Code terminal, and I'm going to change the permission of this file to make it executable. And then I'm going to run this script. I'm going to copy the generated secret string on the console. And then on my VS Code Explorer, I will create a new file to store all my local environment variables, starting with the secret variable. And then I'm going to assign the value of the generated secrets into this new variable. I don't want this file to be pushed to my repository later. So I'll create a git ignore file and add this atlantis.bar file. Notice that there are new files on the root of my repository. These are the packages and libraries downloaded and extracted by my setup script. I also need to add this in my git ignore. The next step I need to do is create a GitHub personal access token. And because I am only testing the tool locally, I will be using my own GitHub account with the integration. And so on my web browser, I'm going to head to GitHub. And on my profile at the top right side of this page, I'm going to go to settings. And on the developer settings section, right at the bottom of this page, I'm going to select personal access token and then click generate new token. I will set the name of this token to temp Atlantis token. And then I'm going to set the expiration to seven days. And on the scopes, I will tick repo, read org inside the admin org and scroll all the way down this page and click generate token. This page shows the generated personal access token. So I will copy that and then switch back to my VS code. And on my variable file, I will add another variable and call it token and set the value to the access token that I just generated. The next thing that I need to do is configure an infrastructure code repository that I will use to integrate with Atlantis. But before I do that, let me go ahead and start running my ngrock on port 4141. So let me head to my VS code terminal. Port 4141 is what Atlantis will open once it is running. And the forwarding URL that is provided on this console will be the endpoint that will make my Atlantis instance accessible from the internet. So I'm going to copy that URL and then head back to my code. And on my variables file, I will add a new variable called URL and set the value using the ngrock endpoint. Now let me switch back to my Git account on my web browser. I'm going to use the repository that I created for my AWS single sign-on infrastructure for this integration. And on this main repo page, 
I'm going to head to settings and on the left panel, I'm going to select webhooks and then click add webhook. I will set the payload URL to the ngrock endpoint and appending slash events at the end. And then I'm going to change the content type to application JSON. And then on the secret field, I will populate this using the randomly generated secret string when I ran my setup script. And then on the section on which events would you like to trigger for this webhook, I'm going to select, let me select individual events, the third option. And then I will make sure that the issue comments checkbox is ticked. This will allow triggers from comments on a pull request. So we will see how this works exactly later on. I will also tick pull request reviews, pushes, and pull requests. And then at the bottom of this page, click add webhook. And then back to my VS code, on my Atlantis variable file, I will add two more variables, username and repo allow list. The username needs to be set using the GitHub account associated with the personal access token that I generated earlier. So in my case, it's essentially just my GitHub account. And repo allow list will contain all the GitHub repositories that can be integrated with Atlantis. I will simply set this to read all my GitHub repositories on my account. To start my Atlantis local instance, I will create a new script and call it startatlantis.sh. The first step that I will do inside this script is source my variable file. And the next step is to run the actual Atlantis instance. This command will need switch parameters, which will eventually consume all the variables that I've defined inside my Atlantis.var. And now that I have my script ready, I'm gonna head to my VS Code terminal. And then I will open a new terminal session to make sure that I don't disturb my ng-rock session. And then I will make my new start Atlantis script executable and then start running my local Atlantis instance. And now that everything is all set, it's time to create a new branch out of my AWS single sign-on repository and create a pull request. So let me switch VS Code sessions. This is my AWS single sign-on infrastructure repository. So let me head to my VS Code terminal and then I will create a new branch to make my changes. And now let me switch back to my VS Code Explorer. And then what I will do is create a new file inside the tfvars directory and call it poc.tfvars. And inside this file, I will set the permission set list. This is the same permission list that I've defined inside my Telegram configuration file. And now I'm gonna head back to my VS Code terminal and then commit my changes. And then push my changes to my remote repository. And now let me switch to my web browser and then raise a pull request for the changes that I've done. Notice that a process was triggered automatically as part of the pull request checks. This is Atlantis running Terraform plan automatically. And if I click the details link right next to the step, this takes me to a page with a URL that points to my ngrock endpoint, which also renders the Terraform runs that my local Atlantis instance has done. The Terraform commands are expected to fail because all the parameters used by this run are default settings. I need to override these settings to make this run work. So let me head back to my VS Code session on my Atlantis setup. The first thing that I will do is create my custom repositories configuration file, which will override the default Atlantis settings. So on the root of my repository, I'm going to create repos.yaml. And inside this file, I will set the workflows. I will define a workflow with the name POC. And inside this workflow, I will define how my Terraform plan and Terraform apply will run. So let's first set the plan. Inside this will be the steps property, which as the name implies, define the set of steps to run as part of the Terraform plan. The first step I will do is set the TF workspace environment variable. And then I will set the default init step and then set the plan step with the overriding parameters that will tell the run to use tfvars file. I also want to override Terraform apply. So let's go ahead and set that up. I also want to set the environment variable and then simply run the apply step. To consume these settings, I would need to create atlantis.yaml file in each GitHub repository that I want to integrate with Atlantis. But because I'm too lazy to go through every single repository and configure this file, the option is to set up a pre-workflow hook. So on my repos.yaml file, I will add repos section at the top 
this repos property accepts an array of settings. So let's create one. I'm going to add an ID. What this ID value does is it simply pulls whatever GitHub repository is being built on the current context. I will also add another property called allows override. And the value of this property accepts an array of string, which I will set to contain workflow. There is a whole spread that discusses all these overrides in Atlantis webpage. So I'll add a link to this page on the description below. And then lastly, I need the pre-workflow hooks property, which will contain all the commands that I need to run before Atlantis starts doing anything else. So what I'm doing here is I'm reading a generic Atlantis YAML file and then dump this to the context that Atlantis is running on. And now I need to create the generic Atlantis YAML file. So on my VS Code Explorer, and then this will be the contents of the file. In this file, I have configured a project with the name POC or POC, but what needs to be pointed out here is that this project is configured to have a workspace called POC and a workflow also called POC. This workflow tells Atlantis which workflow inside the repos that YAML will be used when it starts running. I need to make Atlantis use the repos YAML configuration file that I have created. So on my start script, I will add another switch parameter called repo config and point this to the repos YAML file. And because this switch parameter pulls the value from a variable, I need to define this inside my Atlantis.var. And that's all the changes that I need to do. So let me switch my VS Code terminal. And then I will cancel my local Atlantis instance. And because I need AWS credentials on the Terraform runs inside Atlantis, I will initialize my AWS credentials by running AWS vault. And now I will start my local Atlantis instance. Let me switch back to my GitHub pull request on my browser. I mentioned earlier about triggers through comments on the pull request. So this is what I'm going to do on the next run. On the comment section at the bottom of the pull request, I will type Atlantis plan minus P POC. The dash P is short for project and I want to run the POC project in this case. So if I go ahead and put this comment through, notice that Atlantis jobs are triggered automatically. And if I go ahead and click the details link right next to the step, it takes me to this page that renders the output of the Terraform run from my local Atlantis instance. The Terraform plan has completed successfully. So what I will do next is head back to my pull request in GitHub. What you will notice is that a new comment is added on my pull request that contains a log of the Terraform plan and also some instructions on what to do next. So what I will do now is head down to the comment section on this pull request and I will apply the result of the Terraform plan and then push this comment through and then click the details link right next to the step. And as you can see from this log, the Terraform apply was successful. And if I head back to my pull request, a new comment is added in the pull request indicating that the Terraform apply was successful. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore GitOps using Atlantis. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.